Hey guys, how are you? This is Dr. Kim. This is my very first recording, so I'm really excited to try this out and uh, share interesting cases on a weekly basis. You know, ideally I would like to do this perhaps every day, uh, every time I have something interesting uh, come into uh, my office. You know, I would like to make an effort to share that with you in a timely manner so that you can continue to learn uh, from these classes, uh, these videos. Anyway, uh, this is a really interesting case. Go ahead and take a look at uh, this periapical radiograph. This was taken back in May 2017. If you look carefully, for those of you who have never seen an image from phosphor plate, that's this is how it looks like. It has a letter A, has rounded borders, along with some degradation of the image quality due to uh, overuse of the film, excuse me, phosphor plate. And if you look real carefully, I don't know how well this image quality is going to come through, but you can see fine little scratch marks uh, as I'm tracing with my uh, mouse. So you see that as well. Anyway, this is taken on a, a young patient. Uh, I can't look up the age because I'm afraid that I'm going to show the patient's name. So um, I believe this, I mean, just look at the dentition, right? Um, first recognize that this patient has a mixed dentition, primary central incisors and lateral, primary canine, primary lateral has been exfoliated in this case, uh, primary canine, right? And what else do you see? Or how many teeth do you see superior to the primary central incisors. Well, right above that, right, we've, we have quite a bit of root resorption as expectedly. Uh, we see a crown, tooth number eight, right, a big crown. And also what you should be able to see is the crown of the lateral incisor. Right there. And you see a portion of uh, canine as well right crown of canine you look over to the right just above this one you should be able to find crown of tooth number nine and just distal to that here's your crown of number ten right now both nine and ten demonstrate very little amount of root formation so the root is um, wide open at this point and here you see the crown of number eleven as well what else you should notice by now, I hope so at least, is that there's some unusual or extra opacity in this region. If you didn't see that before, I hope you can see that now. But ideally, again, you should have seen this uh, before me pointing this out. Anyway, what does that look like to you? Okay, before giving away the answer, I want to show you Combim CT of this area. Okay, so this Combim was taken today, approximately a uh, year and a half later, um, uh, yeah, from that prior radiograph, and Without further ado, you, s you are seeing coronal section, sagittal section, and the axial view. I generally like to view axial sections uh, to orient myself, but for those of you who most, you know, most likely you have not seen Kumbin before, this 3D rendering may be easier for you to see. So now, uh, I hope you can see that primary incisors are now gone. We have partially erupted number 9 and erupted number 8. Number 7 can be seen. Here's the crown of number 6. We still have retained our primary first molar, uh, second molar, as well as canine. Okay, first and second and canine. 
uh, let's look at the axial view. So I'm going to go up and down this axial view. Again, I don't know how good the image quality is going to be, but as I scroll through the axial plane, you should be able to see this blue line, a very thin blue line moving up and down through the volume accordingly. So this particular blue line represents the axial plane that we're currently looking at. So as I go toward the apex, did you see that blue line moving superiorly toward the wide open apex of number 8? Likewise, you should be able to see this red line. And red line represents the sagittal view, and that's that particular sagittal view corresponding to this red line. I can use uh, to move my red lines left and right, and you can see how the sagittal section is moving accordingly. And likewise, here is a coronal view. Okay, coronal view. So now let's go back to this axial view. Let me, why don't I start from the incisal edge or the edge of the volume and move superiorly? This is tooth number eight, that's tooth number nine. That's number 7 and that's number 10. Okay, central incisors, lateral incisors. Now let's pay uh, our attention to in between the central incisor. Okay, let me move my cursor a little bit. Well, before I completely give it away, what do you guys see? Or is that too easy? Do you see that there's another tooth looking structure in between and lingual two to the two central incisors? Now let's look at the area in the coronal section. So let me go all the way to the anterior portion of the volume. You can see opening of the nose, right? Okay, here we have two central incisors. As I move posteriorly, do you see that? Let me move the volume. And if we look at this tooth, oh, I said it. Here is a tooth on the sagittal section. We have a mesiodent. Or if you want to call this supernumerary tooth, that's fine with me. Obviously, this is a tooth, right? It's not some other uh, pathology or bony pathology that you may be thinking of but this is tooth. You can see that there's an enamel layer and then uh, the pulpal space as well. So why don't I move the volume so that we can look at this area more closely. Okay, so that is mesio then, that is uh, abutting the lingual surface of tooth number nine right there and it's also inverted okay so one thing that I look for is is this causing any displacement or significant uh, resorption of the adjacent teeth well in this case um, it does appear to me that the root of number nine is a little more displaced buccally however I don't see any evidence of resorption so that's a good thing um, so there it is. This is uh, a case of mesio then. Okay, and um, looking at this 3D rendering view, I can kind of remove the bone using the radio density. I can selectively remove the bone uh, using the Hounsfield unit or grayscale, I should say. So here again, we have eight and nine. Just behind that, you see inverted mesio then. And let me rotate that so that we can take a look at the lingual side. And there you have it. Okay. So uh, this mesio then uh, needs to be definitely extracted and removed. Uh, another thing that I want you to note is that. If you look at the crown of number 10, it's also erupting lingually or palatally. 
so that suggests that there's a lot of crowding in this area uh, there's just not enough room at this point for number 10 to erupt as well as number 11 to erupt if we were to pull number 10 to where it should be I think we're gonna have tremendously hard time finding a space for number 11 to erupt anyway um, that's the learning main learning point for this case and before we finish this video let me go back to the original periapical radiograph and look again where that mesioden is located it should now be very clear to all of you that we have an inverted mesioden very close to tooth number nine all right Thank you all and take care. Bye. Hope this was helpful.